our studios in the heart of Silicon Valley, Palo Alto, California. This is a CUBE Conversation. Hi, and welcome to the CUBE Studios for another CUBE Conversation, where we go in depth with thought leaders driving innovation across the tech industry. I'm your host, Peter Burris. One of the banes of every enterprise is complexity, especially in the security world. The more devices, the more things, the greater the surface attack areas. One of the biggest or best approaches to reducing uh, the challenges of security is to try to increase the overall simplicity of what it is you're trying to secure and the practices that you use. Now, today to talk about that, we're here with Ken Athanasiu, who's the VP and CISO of AutoNation. Ken, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, thanks for having me. So I said up front that challenges of complexity and simplicity are very real. We're going to get into that, but let's start with AutoNation. Tell us a little bit about AutoNation. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure, so uh, AutoNation is the uh, nation's largest uh, new car dealership. Uh, we have about uh, 300 dealerships across the, across the country. We're all North American based. Uh, uh, we sell uh, thousands of cars a year and we're about a $22 billion a year business. Well, that's pretty sizable. And as a company that has to actually deliver something physical, it means you have a pretty broad network of locations where AutoNation has to operate. Have I got that right? Yeah, that's correct. We have, uh, as I said, about 300 different locations across the country. Uh, we also have uh, about seven parts distribution centers. We have uh, collision centers where uh, we actually repair vehicles that uh, have been involved in accidents uh, as well. So it's, a, it's an extensive network. So AutoNation's a company that requires a fair amount of security. You're taking a lot of personal and private information from your customers. You're uh, en enacting or affecting pretty significant transactions, at least in their lives. Tell us a little bit about some of the challenges that AutoNation was facing and what you had to do to reduce the complexity of your overall security stance. Sure, so uh, I've been with the organization about uh, not, not quite five years now. Uh, I'm actually the first CISO that the organization has had. Uh, and I was brought in because they had a, uh, a small breach at a third party uh, company that uh, was handling some of their, their customer information. Uh, that obviously is uh, uh, enough to raise the awareness of uh, the executives, the general counsel, et cetera. Uh, so the, uh, the, the focus was to ensure that uh, they were being uh, as diligent as necessary. So they, uh, at the recommendation of an outside party, hired in uh, me uh, to build a uh, cybersecurity program. Uh, one of the first things uh, I noticed when I got here was that uh, uh, each of the uh, independent locations, the store locations, had an internet point of presence as well as uh, a circuit back to our data centers. Uh, those internet points of presence were protected with uh, fairly antiquated uh, software and techniques. Uh, so that was that was kind of exposing some significant uh, risk to the to the organization. That was that was one of the main problems that uh, I had to solve in the, the you know the first uh, first few months. So you had internet in, you had points of presence and then you had connections back to the data center, which meant that someone could, if they breached one of those POPs, one of those uh, dealerships, could actually affect a fair amount of chaos within your overall corporate uh, uh, network and uh, application uh, infrastructure. Have I got that right? Yeah, absolutely, and, and uh, obviously as a, uh, as a car dealership, we take uh, credit applications from folks on a, on daily, ba on a daily basis. Uh, that that it, the, those applications contain uh, pretty significant privacy information and basically have most everything you need uh, to be able to uh, you know compromise someone's identity, steal their identity, uh, and or commit uh, you know all sorts of different uh, fraud activities. Uh, so we, we take that very seriously, and, and while we do treat uh, our uh, our store's environment. Uh, you know, not as untrusted, but we do segment uh, our stores environment from our backend systems. Um, that uh, that lack of uh, perimeter protections or adequate perimeter protections in the stores was a significant risk. So 
you come in, you look at the situation, a fair amount of locations where problems could arise, a fair amount of personal data that have compromised would affect your brand. Ken, how do you think through the way forward? Sure, so uh, you know the traditional approach to uh, an, an internet point of presence is to, to put a firewall in place. Uh, and then of course you put a, a web proxy in place and then you put an SSL interceptor in place and then you put some uh, you know, uh, network-based malware detection engine in place and then you, you, layer on it, you layer on these controls until you get to the point where hey, we think we're okay. Uh, the, the, the cost associated with doing that sort of thing at 300 different locations, uh, not, not just the, the, the cost of uh, purchasing and implementing a small stack of iron at every one of those locations, but then the ongoing costs of uh, trying to, to manage it. Uh, and most of these devices are not, you're not intended to actually run 300 of these devices across uh, the country. So managing them, uh, replacing them when they fail, uh, just it was, it was something that was a pretty significant challenge. So we decided it was time to think outside the box uh, and uh, look for something that was uh, cloud-based that we could, uh, uh, we could leverage across the entire enterprise uh, with a, a you know, much, uh, much less investment in resources. So what you looked at was these large numbers of devices, the inability to put talent close to them, which would have led to both uh, a lot of cost in the actual devices and a lot of uncertainty in their operation. You looked at uh, using the internet as a way of securing the points of presence themselves. Uh, what direction did you take? So we started looking at um, uh, you know cloud-based services. Uh, we looked at, uh, and I, I was, I'd been in discussions with uh, a couple of these folks uh, while I was at my previous in engagement. Uh, I was at American Eagle Outfitters as their CISO for about seven years. Uh, uh, but we that, that organization was very much a hub and spoke environment and we were backhauling uh, all of the traffic from the stores to the data center uh, and then out to the internet. So the, the, uh, the environment at AutoNation was significantly different and I think much more of a modern approach of uh, having local breakouts with the stores, you know, taking advantage of that, uh, the, the capacity of the internet, that sort of thing. Uh, but to do that, uh, it obviously requires that you still control those. So we started looking at uh, cloud-based services. We looked at Zscaler, we looked at Bluecoat, we looked at WebSense, we looked at Cisco stuff. Uh, and and we, we also looked at some of the, the hardware-based solutions, such as like, uh, you know, SonicWall and and uh, some of the Palo Alto devices. Uh, so we didn't immediately discount the idea that, hey, maybe uh, hardware uh, in each of these stores, like a Soho small home, uh, small office home office device uh, wouldn't work for us, uh, but it, it became quickly apparent that a, uh, an internet-based uh, you know, cloud solution was, uh, was the right way to go. And you chose Zscaler. We, we did, we did. Um, I, I, when we were going through the evaluation uh, and looking at the various products, um, uh, Zscaler definitely had the most complete solution. Uh, most of the other products uh, were not truly a you know, full protocol, next generation firewall in, in the cloud solution. Um, some, of the, some of the solutions were uh, you know, quote unquote cloud-based, uh, but they basically were talking about putting a a virtual instance or multiple virtual instances of a firewall uh, in, in the cloud, right? Which was actually just somebody else's data center. And then pumping that traffic through those virtual instances. That would have reduced the number of uh, uh, instances that we would have to have managed uh, significantly, uh, but it would still be you know, a traditional hardware-based firewall approach just stuck into someone else's data center as a uh, "Quote unquote cloud solution." So Zscaler really had the uh, uh, the most comprehensive uh, of all the solutions that we looked at, uh, and, and you know it it, it uh, we started to to pilot it and, and uh, roll things out, and, and it was working very very well. So right now you've got Zscaler to handle your your uh, your endpoint security from a cloud based solution. How has that changed your security posture? Uh, let's start there. Yeah, so as soon as we started uh, rolling Zscaler out, uh, you know, 
kind of as a prophylactic around the environment. Uh, it gave us some pretty excellent visibility. Uh, we were we were running uh, McAfee uh, antivirus at the time. Uh, we were using Microsoft SCCM uh, to uh, to do patching. Uh, we were doing a number of other things in the environment that. Uh, as soon as we rolled Zscaler out, we started getting the visibility into the traffic. We started really seeing what was actually happening in our environment. Uh, it, it was very clear that those solutions were significantly deficient. Uh, we were seeing, uh, you know, commodity malware infections happen on a fairly regular basis. Uh, we were seeing uh, bot traffic, uh, you know, originating from our systems. Uh, it was it was obvious that our internal controls uh, were were uh, not where they needed to be, uh, and that actually generated uh, using that as empirical evidence, right? And taking that to uh, my executives and my uh, risk committee, uh, it, it was very easy to justify uh, additional investments in uh, other security tools uh, to really clean up the environment. Uh, we, we deployed a brand new end, uh, endpoint protection solution. We deployed a brand new uh, uh, solution for uh, for management uh, and patching of the endpoints. Uh, you know, we, we made a lot of very significant changes in the environment, and all of that was generated out of the visibility we got from uh, you know pumping all that that client traffic through Zscaler. Well, it sounds like Zscaler's had a significant impact on the overall security posture of AutoNation. How has it made your CISO feel? Yeah, well, I can I can sleep at night for the most part. Um, uh, you know, uh, whenever you get into a new organization, you get a perspective on the level of risk uh, that you're subjected to. Uh, you either have it, it, your reaction is a, is along a spectrum, and it's either you know complete panic to uh, oh okay this isn't so bad. Um, I, I will say that I wasn't in complete panic when I got down here and fully understood the situation, but I will say that it wasn't on the, oh, it's not too bad side of the spectrum either. Um, there was a significant amount of work uh, that needed to be done. And uh, again, that, that I, can't, I can't stress uh, how much that visibility uh, actually helped and uh, helped us drive uh, new controls into the environment. Ken Athanasiu talking about the impact of Zscaler and how it simplified the security posture of AutoNation. Thanks very much for being on theCUBE. Thanks very much for having me. Once again, I'm Peter Burris. This has been another CUBE Conversation. See you next time.